I see that my program now is getting a little bit longer, so I would like to take advantage of something called encapsulation, which groups several commands together by the function that they play in the program. So we're going to come over here to my blocks, the red circle, and choose make a block. We don't have any blocks yet, but this is going to be called initialize. I'm naming it. This will be a block to set initial values for my variables. I see define initialize. I'm going to pull it over to the right here. And break right before my loop, and then I'm going to take all these initial tasks that I need to do before I start my program, and grab the block initialize itself, which is now in my tool tray, place it right here, and now my main program itself is much shorter because I've separated this concern. I have a separation of concerns into initialize, and then the thing I do in my loop, and I notice if I click on the green flag, I still get the same behavior, but I know if I want to change my initial conditions, I do it in this initialize block on the right. Next I know that I'm updating my position x, my position y, and my velocity vy, so I'd like to make a block for that. Since this is what we do to step forward with our variables, I'm going to call this block step forward. For step forward, I'm going to grab the commands that are inside my loop here, place them under step forward. I'll keep the drawing bit here inside the loop, and then replace the commands that were there with step forward, and now I have a nice short program. It says, initialize my variables, and now, until y is less than my starting y, just repeat this procedure, and then say how far you went. Let's watch it again. I find that much easier to read. Finally, I'd like to make this program interactive so that I can run it over and over again with different starting conditions, but without having to change the program itself. So we're going to come to this light blue circle, Sensing, and use this function called Ask. After going to our initial position, we're going to ask, what is your initial speed and weight? Now we'll make a new variable called v0, and using set, we will set v0 equal to, coming back to the light blue, answer. This takes the result of the ask and sets it equal to our initial velocity. Remember, we have tools for splitting a v0 into the forward part and the up part. This will involve multiplication. I remember that's the third green pill. I need that for both the x and the y, the multiplication. Coming back to variables, I know I need to multiply v0 by something. I'm going co to come back to my operators here. At the very bottom, I see absolute value of. I know that's not what I want, but I see that I can change absolute value with this down arrow. I'm going to change it to cosine for my x component and sine for my y component. Cosine and sine of what? I know that I need an angle. I can use sensing to find out what that angle is by asking, what is your launch angle? Remember what we do? We use set, and we need a new variable. We'll call it theta. You could call it angle. We'll say set theta to answer, and answer always holds the most recent answer, and my launch angle will be 53 degrees. Now we need to take that new variable theta and put it into our cosine and sine functions. And let's try running the program to see that interactive bit at the beginning. What's my initial speed? My initial speed is 50 meters per second, and my launch angle is 53. This is flying in the same path we saw before, and repeating that same distance at the end. So now we have an interactive program. We can test things like, if I launch at the same initial speed, but a complementary angle, do I get the same range? So this looks like it's working now. It's an interactive tool, and I can update it. I can customize. I could change the background if I have a different object. So we can use this to make predictions about flights with different initial conditions.